Hi viewers, welcome to Ashia Vlogs and Crafts. Today we are going to listen to Sri Sai Baba Sai Sacharita Chapter 3. Let's go in. Sai Baba's Sanction and Promise Assignment of Work to Devotees Baba's Stories as Beacon Light His Motherly Love Roila's Story His Sweet and Nectar-like Words Sai Baba's Sanction and Promise as described in the previous chapter, Sai Baba gave his complete assent to the writing of the Sai Satcharita and said, I fully agree with you regarding the writing of Satcharita. You do your duty, don't be afraid in the least. Steady your mind and have faith in my words. If my Leelas are written, the Avitya nascence will vanish and if they are attentively and devotedly listened to, the consciousness of the worldly existence will abate and strong waves of devotion and love will rise up and if one dives deep into my leelas, he would get precious jewels of knowledge. Hearing this, the author was much pleased and he at once became fearless and confident and thought that the work was bound to be a success. Then, turning to Shama, Madhra Deshpande, Sai Baba said, if a man utters my name with love, I shall fulfill all his wishes, increase his devotion. And if he sings earnestly my life and my deeds, him I shall be set in front and back and all sides. Those devotees who are attached to me, heart and soul, will naturally feel happiness. When they hear these stories, believe me that if anybody sings my leelas, I will give him infinite joy and everlasting contentment. It is my special characteristic to free any person who surrenders completely to me and who worships me faithfully and who remembers me and meditates on me constantly. How can they be conscious of worldly objects and sensations? Who utter my name, who worship me, who think of my stories and my life and who thus always remember me? I shall draw out my devotees from the jaws of death. If my stories are listened to, all the diseases will be got rid of. So hear my stories with respect and think and meditate on them. Assimilate them. This is the way of happiness and contentment. The pride and egoism of my devotees will vanish. The mind of the hearers will be set at rest. And if he has wholehearted and complete faith, he will be one with supreme consciousness. The simple remembrance of my name as Sai, Sai will do away with the sins of speech and hearing. Different works assigned to devotees. The Lord entrusts different works to different devotees. Some are given the work of building temples and mats or guts, flights of steps on rivers. Some are made to sing the glories of God. Some are sent on pilgrims, but to me was allotted the work of writing the Sai Satcharita. Being a jack of all trades, but master of none, I was quite unqualified for this job. Then, why should I undertake such a difficult task? Who can describe the true life of Sai Baba? Sai Baba's grace alone can enable one to accomplish this difficult work. So, when I took the pen in my hand, Sai Baba took away my egoism and himself wrote his stories. The credit of relating these stories therefore goes to him and not to me. Though Brahmin by birth, I lack the two eyes, i.e. the sight or vision of Shruti and Smriti, and therefore was not at all capable of writing the Sai Sacharita. But the grace of the Lord makes a dumb man talk enables a lame man to cross a mountain. He alone knows the ways of getting things done. As he likes, neither the flute nor the harmonium knows how the sounds are produced. This is the concern of the player. The oozing of Chantrakan jewel and the surging of the sea are not due to the jewel and the sea, but due to the rising of the moon. Baba's stories as, as beacon lights. Lighthouses are constructed at various places in the sea to enable the boatmen to avoid rocks and dangers and make them sail safely. Sai Baba's stories serve a similar purpose in the ocean of worldly existence. They suppress nectar in sweetness 
and make our worldly path smooth and easy to traverse. Blessed are the stories of the saints. When they enter our hearts through the years, the body consciousness or egoism and the sense of duality vanish. And when they are stored in the heart, doubts will evade. Pride of the body will fall and the wisdom will be stored in abundance. The description of Baba's pure fame and the hearing of the same with love will destroy the sins of the devotees. And therefore, this is the simple sadhana for attaining salvation. The sadhana for Krita age was Samadhamma, tranquility of mind and body. For Trita age, sacrifice. For Dwapa worship and for Kali present age, it is singing of the name and glory of the God, Lord. This last sadhana is open to all the people of the four Varnas, Brahmins, etc., the other sadhanas with yoga, tyaga, sacrifice, dhyan, meditation, and dhyana dharna, concentration are very difficult to practice. But singing and hearing the stories and the glory of the Lord Sai Baba is very easy. We, on, we have only to turn our attention towards them. The listening to and the singing of the stories will remove the attachment to the senses and their objects and will make the devotees dispassionate and will ultimately lead them to self-realization. With this end in view, Sai Baba made me write his stories as such charita. The devotees may now easily read and hear the stories of Sai Baba and while doing so, meditate on him, his form and thus attain devotion to Guru and God. Sai Baba, get dispassion and self-realization. In the preparation and writing of this work, such charita, it is Sai Baba's grace with which has accomplished everything, making use of me as a mere instrument. Motherly love of Sai Baba. Everybody knows how a cow loves an infant calf. Her udder is always full and when the calf wants milk and dashes at the udder, out comes the milk in an unceasingly flow. Similarly, a human mother knows the wants of a child beforehand and feeds him at her breast in time. In case of dressing and adorning the child, the mother takes particular care to see that this is well done. The child knows or cares nothing about this, but the mother's joy no, knows no bounds when she sees her child well dressed and adorned. The love of the mother is peculiar, extraordinary and disinterested. And as no parallel, Sadgurus feel this motherly love towards their disciples. Sai Baba had the same love towards me, and I gave in an instance of it below. In 1916, I retired from government service. The pension that was settled in my case what was not sufficient to maintain my family decently. On Guru Purnima, 15th of Ashada day of that year, I went to Shridi with other devotees. There, Mr. Anachinchanikar, of his own accord, prayed to Baba for me as follows. Please look kindly at him. The pension he gets is quite insufficient. His family is growing. Give him some other appointment. Remove his anxiety and make him happy. Baba replied, he will get some other job, but now he should serve me and be happy. His plates will never will be ever full and never empty. He should turn all his attention towards me and avoid the company of atheist, irreligious, irreligious and wicked people. He should be modest and humble towards all and worship me with heart and soul. If he does this, he will get eternal happiness. The question, who is this he, whose worship is advocated? is already answered in a note on who is Sai Baba in the prologue at the beginning of this work. Rohila story. The story of Rohila illustrates Sai Baba's all embarrassing love. Embracing love. One Rohila, tall and well built, strong as a bull, came to Sridi wearing a long kafni robe and was enamored of the Sai who stayed there. Day and night, he used to recite in loud and harsh tone the Kalma, verses from Holy Quran, and shout, Allah, O Habbar, God is great. 
most people of Shridi were working in their fields during the day and when they returned to their homes at night, they were welcomed with Rohila's harsh cries and shouts. They could get no sleep and felt much trouble and inconvenience. They suffered this nuisance for some days in silence. And when they could stand it no longer, they approached Baba and requested him to check the Rohila and stop the nuisance. Baba did not attend to their complaint. On the contrary, Baba took the villagers to task and asked them to mind their own business. He said to them that Rohila had got a very bad wife who tried to trouble the Rohila and himself. But hearing the Rohila's prayers, she dared not enter and they were at peace. In fact, the Rohila had no wife and by his wife, Baba meant Durbuti, evil thoughts. As Baba liked prayers and cries to God better than anything else, he took the side of Rohila and asked the villagers to wait and bear with the nuisance, which would abate in due course. Baba's sweet and nectar-like words. One day at noon, after Arati, devotees were returning to their lodgings, when Baba gave the following beautiful advice. Be wherever you like, do whatever you choose. Remember this well that all what you do is known to me. I am the inner ruler of all and seated in your hearts. I envelop all the creatures, the movable and immovable world. I am the controller, the wire puller of the show of this universe. I am the mother, origin of all beings, the harmony of three gunas, the profiler of all senses. The creator, preserver and destroyer, nothing will harm him who turns his attention towards me. But Maya will lash or whip him who forgets me. All the insects, ants, the visible, movable and immovable world is my body or form. Hearing these beautiful and precious words, I at once decided in my mind to serve no man henceforth but my guru only. But the reply of Baba of Anna Chinchika's query which was really mine, that I would get some job, began to revolve in my mind, and I began to think whether it would come to happen. As future events showed, Baba's words came true, and I got a government job, but that was of short duration. Then I became free and devoted myself solely to the service of my Guru, Sai Baba. Before concluding this chapter, I request readers to leave out the various hindrances with indolence, sleep, wandering of mind, attachments to senses, etc. and turn their whole and undivided attention to these stories of Sai Baba. Let their love be natural. Let them know the secret of devotion. Let them not exhaust themselves by other sadhanas. Let them stick to this simple remedy, i.e. listening to Sai Baba stories. This will destroy their ignorance and will secure for them salvation. A miser may stay at various places, but he constantly thinks of his buried treasure. So let Sai Baba be enthroned in the hearts of all. In the next chapter, I shall speak of Sai Baba's advent in Shridi. Bow to Sri Sai. Peace be to all. Please like, share, support and subscribe. Thank you friends. Bye bye.